So it doesn't matter whether you are a huge fan of indie games or you are just starting. In the world of games that are hoary old chestnuts rather than great new ideas, and almost every AAA game needs at least a year to be fixed and be playable, indie games give a breath of freshness to the genre. A big chunk of these games is still made with love and passion from gamers for gamers. That's why if you want to play something that is unique, great and for most simply not broken, then you may find some great new titles that are often overlooked. So let me take you on a journey with only 5 games that I would recommend you to try to start your own history with these beautiful games. So let's start with something that I love the most. I want to begin with a game that is particularly charming. Of course, I'm talking about Stardew Valley. If you are a viewer of mine, then you probably already know how much I love this game. This one, my friends, is just a cozy farming sim with beautiful pixel art and RPG elements developed by Concerned Ape. In this game, you take on the role of a young farmer who inherits an old farm from their grandpa. Your job is to take care of this farm, cultivate and harvest crops, tend to animals and so on. Your journey begins in the small pelican town where you will meet friendly townsfolk, befriend them and even romance them. But the town has its own secrets for you to discover and the opportunity to rebuild its former glory. This beautiful pixel art game gives you the opportunity to relax, listen to great music and experience the life of a farmer in a small town. Besides that, you will be able to explore the world, fight monsters, decorate your farm and house, gather equipment and much, much more. I won't give you more details, I think this is surely enough to pique your interest. If you enjoy games like this, give it a try, trust me, it's one of a kind game. Now we'll move on to another title, which comes from a completely different genre. And I'm talking about Hollow Knight. On the horizon slowly appearing is the next installment, namely Silksong, but we still have to wait a bit. If you want to learn more about good and upcoming Metroidvanias, I invite you to check out my previous videos, the links to which you can find in the description and comments. Alright, but what is this Hollow Knight? Since the material is intended for newbies to the genre, I will make it very simple. It's a game from the Metroidvania genre, which is nothing else but an action platformer game. Here we take on the role of the Hollow Knight, whose task is to traverse the beautifully crafted world of Hollow Nest. Throughout our adventure, we'll be fighting hordes of enemies, exploring the world and completing tasks for characters living in this world. It's a genre that may not appeal to everyone, because it requires more focus and skill. The combat is very fast paced and demands precision from us, the enemies are challenging and can make the game difficult. However, it's a title that I think can help you ease into the genre, and if you like it, I have something more serious for you, but that's in a moment. In addition to the typical gameplay of the genre, I think it's worth mentioning the audiovisual aspect and here we have something wonderful. The world created in this game is simply beautiful, very atmospheric and gothic landscape, grotesque and somewhat, somewhat cute but also strange enemies and NPCs. Visually it looks intriguing and very nice, and the soundtrack adds an extra atmosphere. I recommend checking out this title to see if it suits you, it's in my opinion one of the best games in this genre. So let's jump to another game from the same genre, Blasphemous is a game where you play as the Penitent One, the lone survivor of the Silent Sorrow Massacre trapped in an unending cycle of death and rebirth. Your goal is to break this fate and confront the source of suffering. Sounds great, right? And it looks even better, the graphics in this game are truly amazing, featuring a beautiful pixel art style, the animations are great, giving the combat a smooth and brutal feel, overall the game is very dark, grim and grotesque, and may not be for everyone, but I highly recommend giving it a try. It's one of the best metroidvania games I've ever played, there is also a second installment on the way, which I covered in my video about upcoming metroidvania games that I mentioned previously. This one is very, I mean very different from Hollow Knight, as here we have something like a Souls-like itself. You can try to play it before Hollow Knight, but remember that it is hard and, as I said, very, very dark.
So now we've covered three games from two different genres. Now let's jump to another one that I think you will like and probably already know. Let's talk about roguelikes. I was really wondering what I should put here, I thought maybe Hades or something that combines this and the previous genre, like Dead Cells, but you know what, let's talk about something that I begin my journey with and why I like roguelikes so much. And there is no other game like The Binding of Isaac, right? When I first played it, I thought this game was very strange. But first of all, what is a roguelike game? To put it as simple as I can, let's stick to this. It's an action-adventure game that makes you lose all progress and start over again if you fail at any point in the game. Simple, right? So if you die, you start all over again. So now what is The Binding of Isaac? This is a roguelike at its finest. When I first played it, I thought, oh my god, this looks strange. It's the level design, the items we gather to empower our character or weaken ourselves down are kinda creepy. The design of the monsters, bosses and items is also creepy and sometimes disgusting, but you know what? It gives a lot of character to the game. Our job will be to fight monsters and bosses, crawl to the lower levels of dungeon and what's most important, make it out alive to face our mother. I think it's a great game overall and it made me like other roguelikes, so I think it's a great idea to recommend it to you as your first game as well. Now let's delve into the realm of unique narrative experiences with last but not least Undertale. Developed by Toby Fox, this indie gem is unlike any other game you've played. Undertale takes the traditional RPG formula and turns it on its head, allowing players to navigate through a world where choices matter and combat can be approached in a non-traditional pacifist manner. In Undertale, you control a human who has fallen into the underground, a world populated by monsters. The game's standout feature is its commitment to player agency. Every decision you make, from battles to interactions with characters, influences the story's outcome. You can choose to befriend or spare monsters rather than fight them, leading to multiple endings based on your choices. The charming pixel art style, quirky characters and a soundtrack that perfectly complements the game's atmosphere contribute to Undertale's appeal. It's a game that showcases the potential for storytelling and player agency in the indie game landscape. Whether you're drawn to heartfelt narratives or enjoy games that subvert expectations, Undertale is a must-play that will leave a lasting impression. And that would be everything that I've prepared for you in today's video. I really hope you liked it and found some new great titles to play. If you want to discover more fantastic indie games, check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date. Also, I apologize for not uploading for such a long time. I'm back with new ideas, so stay tuned. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.